Good evening. Welcome to the Urbana City Council. We're going to start this meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, let's call the meeting to order, and would the clerk please call the roll? Here. Mr. Bowersox. Here. Ms. Shandleworth. Present. Mr. Lewis. Here. Mr. Roberts. Here. Mr. Smythe. Here. Ms. Stevenson. Present. Mayor Pressing. Here. The first item of business is, is approval of minutes of the previous meeting. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Second. Okay, a motion to approve by Ms. Stevenson, seconded by Ms. Barnes. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? I guess there's no one opposed. Any additions to the agenda? Okay, uh, petitions and communications. I have two people who would like to address the council. One of them is, um, I, can't, I can't really read your first name. Your last name is Neil. You're from Outdoor Advertising. Jackson. Oh, Daxton. Okay. Would you like to address the council? And just state your name and address and... Um, Okay, sorry about that. And uh, really, I'd just like to, I'd, li I'd like to sit in front of you, um, answer any questions you might have, um, give you just a brief idea of what I'm up against with the interim development ordinance. And uh, uh, I'd like to stay in, in contact with everyone so that I can stay on top of my interest and uh, serve you with any knowledge that I have of the business to better serve the, the development ordinance. Um, first of all, I, I started working in uh, Champaign-Urbana to build a small outdoor advertising market, which I could maintain. Um, I had considered moving to the market once I developed a a, uh, a certain number of locations, which is not not a very high number of locations by any means, but uh, I just I think I got here at uh, the right time, but maybe the wrong time. Um, I guess what it boils down to is I've spent a lot of time and a lot of money here uh, to try to 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 build the uh, signs in accordance with the existing ordinance as it was. And uh, I know the, the moratorium has been in place now for more than a year, and um, I'm not sure that we've taken any steps uh, in the direction that I, I would I would like to see it take. Um, I, I don't have a vision of building several signs in your market, so many signs that it's it's not profitable for me, and that it's aesthetically displeasing to to the community. Um, I guess basically my main general concern is the removal of my existing assets, uh, which I've worked hard to, to produce, um, you know, all the while having a, a, a plan to, to move here to operate a, a business which would be very much based on local, local marketing, uh, local small businesses. I don't have a lot of national accounts. I don't, uh, I don't have connections with Nextel 
USA. It's a lot of mom pops, that kind of thing. And uh, I guess, you know, at this point, I'm, I'm in a position where I have to determine whether or not it's worth staying and, and fighting for a, uh, you know, just a, a foothold in a market where I can operate or whether or not I have to uh, conform to a monopoly, which, you know, it's nothing to, it's not, I'm not saying anything about my competitor except for the fact that they have a monopoly in this market um, and uh, just subside to, to their, to, to, I guess, their goals. Which, which I'm not sure of. Um, I know there had been some discussion about a cap and replace for, for billboard signs or a, a sunset arrangement. Um, you know, I guess what I propose is just that we sit down, whether it be a, in a study session or one-on-one -on -one or, or however it may work, um, to try to reach some kind of a, a medium so that <laughs> Urbana is is protected so that you know your interests are protected and that you don't see ten signs go up again in any, any given year. Um, something that may keep other billboard companies from coming in. I, I don't think you've got to really have to worry about that much. Um, the opportunity is very limited at this point, regardless. I mean, even if uh, even if the ordinance was as it was, you know, 13, 14 months ago. Still, a very limited number of signs which could be built. Um, but, you know, I, what what I would like to do is is to offer my services to help develop an ordinance which will protect not only my interest, the interest of my competitor, but the interest of the city. Um, I think we may be heading down the wrong road in trying to completely ban signs and to remove signs because that becomes a, you know, a, a legal debate, a constitutional issue, what have you. Um, you know, the attorneys thrive on that kind of thing. There's, there's, there are billboard attorneys who their job, point blank, is to combat that type of uh, an ordinance. We will be having a study session on this in a few months, so you're welcome to participate in that. Okay. Do you have Do you have any idea of a, like a timeline? Because I mean that that that's a major concern for me as well. Do, do you have an, a month that might be? <laughs> I mean, it's it's been put on the back burner, of course, because, the, the, you know, I know the, the, you guys have had some positions that weren't. Uh, We're doing research and uh, our attorneys getting up to speed on the issue, as is Robert Myers, and we think we'll be able to come back with additional information probably late January, February. And we'll send you an invitation to come to the study session. Okay, sure. Well, if, if, there's, any, if there's any information that I can provide to, to anyone, I, can, I will leave my contact information. Um, if there are any questions, it's, I, I, I just want to say that I believe that we can come to an agreement without having to <laughs> butt heads in, in regards to, to Adams or, or Redfish advertising. Okay, we, we do have a question from Mr. Roberts. Thanks. And it, this is just a, a statement. Uh, we are looking at our sign ordinance and revising it. Nothing's final. We haven't really, you know, really actually begun that procedure, but we have thoughts. And I think that um, it would be useful to bring, um, you know, if it's possible. And I don't know what what the plans are of the market that you are trying to provide, but um, I see that one of the, one of the goals might be to reduce the size of signage in town. And uh, that would be from going from the large size to the, the junior size signs. And I don't know if you're interested in those size of signage or not, but um, it's one of the ways that, we're, that I'm imagining um, reducing the impact of signage without actually stopping it. Right. And I, so so uh, I think alternatives to the customary signage that we see typically promoted now would be a useful thing to consider and to bring to the discussion in when the city has it. 
Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you for your time. Next, uh, Gabe, would you like to address the council? Please state your name and address. Good evening, Dave, uh, 249 North High Cross. Well, you know, I tried to stay out of this place since the last time, but uh, like Michael Corleone, and pulled back in. Um, I was minding my own business last week, and I got a call from uh, uh, the housing inspector saying that um, the ads in the paper, my ads were wrong. So I said, well, what are you reading ads for? He said, well, he's been instructed uh, by at least one member of this uh, council and an ex-council member that he needs to go through the ads and uh, make sure that nobody's advertising uh, a house that maybe has more than four bedrooms. I said, well, so what? What's the penalty? He said, well, there's no penalty yet. I said, no. Why bother? What's, what's the point? You know, and uh, the reason why I come here usually, it's obviously I see things very differently from uh, most people here. And I think I have uh, um, the advantage of being able to look at uh, different societies and compare it to this one. And uh, in spite of the disdain which uh, some people have for me, um, it is obvious that I know what I'm talking about. And um, all I wanted to say is that, you know, Luna, Luna I happen to read several of their emails, you know, uh, not everybody agrees with what they say. They have won, okay? Let it be, you know? I mean, now that you're, you're not reading ads, the next thing is you want to write my ads for me, you know? I mean, uh, where would it stop? We started this process, what? 13 years ago, by downzoning properties, you said it was the interest of a banner. You reduce some, you said it was R7. If we wanted to uh, build an apartment building on it, we should come here and, uh, you know, in my case, come in here and sing, we shall overcome. And uh, you might uh, agree uh, to let me build an apartment building, etc. Then after that, you know, it comes the tenant's ordinance. You know, let landlords go. You know, most of them are already rich. Leave them alone, you know. It's almost smacks of, I understand that intellectuals have a natural antagonism against business people. I understand that because we're all in a wealth swift stick. It's a capitalist economy. And uh, just like um, intellectuals or professors see themselves as the intellectuals or the brilliant people, business people, we see ourselves as the real intellectuals. We put our money in a business venture. If it doesn't work, we go broke. You can decide on writing theories and papers that nobody reads. Whether it's right or wrong, there are no consequences. Well, that's beside the point. I'm waiting for what the penalty will be for uh, advertising in the papers. The other thing I was uh, sort of uh, interested in, I see that uh, uh, one of the ex-council members, obviously, I'm sure some people uh, agree with it also, uh, has been going around talking about Section 8. I talked about that last year, you know, and I said uh, that I was so interested in Section 8 that when this uh, body passed the ordinance about four related people and wanted people to jump through hoops, I said, well, I'll buy a lot of houses in that neighborhood and put as many Section 8 people there as possible. And uh, there was an opera, you know, the emails from Wuna or Luna, whatever it is, was going to and forth, you know, and they actually uh, were interested in having the city sue me for blockbusting. The only reason why they didn't try that was because one of the council members put his foot in his mouth by saying that, well, if blacks move into that neighborhood, the value of property will go down. Well, I wish they had sued me because more than 2,000 years ago, some guy named David killed Goliath. Till this day, he's been getting great publicity. You know, and believe me, you know, one of these days, people are going to... Uh, Overdo stuff that um, is not in their interest, you know. So, you know, uh, all I'm saying is just 
let landlords be. You know, that's all. You know, I mean, there's not much more that you can do, you can do about it. You can harass them with the uh, 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 with the with the city or whatever. You know, I can come in here and you can talk to me like your lower level employee. But of course, the reason is because I count. If I did not count, you wouldn't talk like that. You would just ignore me. But I'm difficult to ignore. You know, so. Uh, Thanks very much, and I'm sure, you know, uh, I'm sure nobody will have any questions, but I just thought I'll take time out of uh, being with my kids and come in here once again and dispense wisdom. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else like to address the council? Okay, let's move on to old business. Is there any old business? Uh, one thing I just wanted to bring up with regard to our meeting next Monday night, or if uh, we're going to uh, change that and um, possibly do our a special council meeting, a committee meeting, or have we given some thought to the next couple of weeks? Has anyone come up with an idea on this? Mr. Bowersox. But the only thing I had written down as far as the holiday schedule goes was that we were canceling our meeting on December 26th that's a Monday and it's the day after the Christmas holiday and that we would also cancel the meeting on January 2 which is a, another Monday and it's New Year's Day those were two dates we'd said we'd cancel back at the caucus meetings we had right. a number of months ago but that doesn't address next week um, I believe I heard from staff that because I was inquiring to staff because I'm going to be the committee chair uh, at the next meeting and um, they are out of the, the office is closed on for us on Thursday and Friday so uh, there would be little time to gather the information that we need for the next committee meeting. Um, okay. So just thought that we probably needed to talk about that and, and uh, I would recommend that we uh, hold a, uh, well we have some options. On December 5th, which is the following Monday, if we cancel actually the 28th, we could hold a special committee meeting followed by the regular council meeting if we chose to do that. Or we could just take new business and do it December 5th. Mr. Smith. I believe um, we cannot hold a committee meeting in advance of a council meeting where that committee meeting would be sending material to the council meeting. It can be the other way around. We can have a special council meeting with the committee meeting following. Or, or we can just have a council meeting, which is a regularly scheduled council meeting, and just do new business. I mean, just do whatever new business that comes forward. Mm -hmm. How about just having the committee meeting? And then um, the council meeting after. Are that would be fine with Are me. they preset? There, there was, there, yeah, they're, they're preset. By, by ordinance, it says that we have so many committee meetings per month. So we just need to see, look, seek uh, for your guidance, I think, on how to exactly do this so that we actually follow our ordinances. If you do the committee meeting prior to the council meeting, what you would do is the items that you discuss at that committee meeting could be moved to the council meeting after the next committee meeting, which would still give you an opportunity to discuss what it is that you need to discuss and not have to act on it immediately. Can they do that, Jim? Well, they could do that. Um, the other way to do it is you set your committee schedule and any item that you think might come to the floor, you would have to publish in advance as on the council agenda. And then you might have to defer some of those matters or take them off the agenda depending on what happened at the committee session. But the key thing to keep in mind is that according to some of the recent litigation is that anything that you act on at the council meeting has to be pre-published and on the agenda. And it has to be a sufficient specificity in the way it's laid out that you could reasonably identify that item on the agenda. Mr. Bowersox. Yeah, I was just wondering, maybe Bruce or Libby, if either of you could comment on any particular planning cases or anything you know that really is time sensitive that needs action in these next few weeks. There is a, a variance that has been forwarded from the zoning board and that would go to council, would skip committee. and. That one I know for sure um, they're looking for December 5th. So how about if we just skip the committee meeting and just do the council meeting on the 5th? Bruce. 
my cheat sheet for staff tomorrow, we had actually canceled or penciled in canceled because we don't have any staff items for that committee agenda. So uh, we do have a couple of CD items we could do on the 5th, and we have the Wakeland variance on the 5th. And so given that, those can go straight to council. We have no staff items for the 28th. Mr. Roberts. Well, does that clear up the requirement, which I understand is that we would have two committee meetings per month, or is that? We can cancel that. Just cancel it would be the best option. Is there a motion to cancel the meeting? Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? I guess we'll be back on December 5th. Okay, reports of standing committees. The Committee of the Whole. Who chaired the committee last time I was gone? I oh, Heather. Heard. Okay, Heather Stevenson. Ordinance number 2005-11-168, an ordinance and approved approving an agreement with the Urbana and Champaign Sanitary District for the sewer billing charges for the committee. I so move. Motion by Ms. Stevenson, seconded by Mr. Lewis. Lewis. Is there any discussion? Um, I guess this, is this a roll call? Okay, would the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Barnes? Yes. Mr. Bowersatz? Yes. Ms. Shenowick? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. Mr. Smythe? Yes. Ms. Stevenson? Yes. Ordinance number 2005-11-169, an ordinance amending Chapter 24 of the City of Urbana Code of Ordinances Sewer Use Charges for the Committee. I so move. Second. Motion by Ms. Stevenson, second by Mr. Lewis. Any discussion? Would the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Barnes? Yes. Mr. Bowersox? Yes. Ms. Shenoweth? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. Mr. Smythe? Yes. Ms. Stevenson? Yes. Ordinance number 2005-11-170, an ordinance amending Chapter 14, Section 14-7, Schedule of Fees for the Sewer Use Charges for the Committee. I so move. I second. A motion by Ms. Stevenson, second by Mr. Roberts. Ordinance number 2005-11-170. Is there any discussion? Would the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Barnes? Yes. Mr. Bowersox? Yes. Ms. Janowith? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. Mr. Smythe? Yes. Ms. Stevenson? Yes. <clears throat> I didn't. I'd like to thank Ron and his staff for putting this together as well as the help from legal because this will definitely be a, a convenience and an improvement to our citizens. And there's been a lot of confusion in the being involved with the city for a number of years. There's been a lot of confusion over the double bills, and uh, I think this will be a service improvement to our citizens, so thank you. Mm. Ordinance number 2005-11-167, an ordinance amending Schedule J of Section 23-183 of the Urbana Local Traffic Code prohibiting parking at all times on certain streets. This is between, uh, Maple Street between Michigan Avenue and Pennsylvania Avenue and the 300 block of East Crystal Lake Drive. For the committee, I so move. Motion by Ms. Stevenson, seconded by Mr. Smythe. Is there any discussion? If not, would the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Barnes? Yes. Mr. Bowersox? Yes. Ms. Shenoweth? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. Mr. Smythe? Yes. Ms. Stevenson? Yes. The motion carries. <clears throat> Ms. Stevenson. This is a motion to consider the CDBG funding for Scottswood's drainage project. project. Second. Okay, motion by Ms. Stevenson, seconded by Ms. Barnes. Any discussion? If there is no discussion, would the clerk please call the roll? 
Ms. Barnes? Yes. Mr. Bowersox? Yes. Ms. Shenoweth? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. Mr. Smyth? Yes. Ms. Stevenson? Yes. Motion carries. And the last um, item of business of the Standing Committee uh, committee of the full would be resolution number 2005-11-022 R, a resolution of support for improvements to Lincoln Avenue, the Lincoln Avenue traffic signals and striping. For the committee, I so move. I second that motion. Um, the motion is by Ms. Stevenson and seconded by Mr. Roberts. Is there any discussion? Well, I, I'm kind of concerned about it um, from a legal standpoint, the mix of the bicycles and the, and the traffic. And I've asked our city attorney, Jim Gitz, to um, look into this. And I think he might have a few comments to make at this point. Mr. Gitz. Your Honor, um, there are a couple of questions that have been asked of legal in terms of, of what are the potential issues that might arise out of these proposed changes. Um, I want to share with the council that at this time uh, we're looking at those issues, but my exposure to this came at our Committee of the Whole administrative meeting. Um, I do think that there are some issues that we would do well to examine. I know that the planning for these improvements will continue to take place in public works. I've had some discussions earlier today uh, with Bill Gray, uh, Director of Public Works. Um, if we pass this resolution, I don't think that that um, is the end of the world. Um, I do think that if we want to cross all of our T's and dot all of our I's uh, and do this consciously, there is some more work to be done. And I think we'll end up in the same place a couple of weeks from now, uh, but perhaps with more information at hand. Uh, so I wanted to share that before we vote on that issue. Are there any questions? Mr. Um, a couple comments. Um, uh, first, uh, I'd like to know that the Illinois Student Senate uh, passed a resolution in support of the Lincoln Avenue improvements uh, last week. Um, Justin Cahindo uh, spoke to us a week ago about this, and in fact, it, it has been done. I'll save us the uh, reading the whole thing and, and simply ask the clerk to include it in the minutes. Um, I'd also like to point out that there is at least one uh, curb cut in Lincoln Avenue existing. It's actually opposite the Iowa Street, uh, the Iowa st opposite Iowa Street on the uh, on the west side. It is not without precedent to to have some provision for uh, bicyclists coming out at that point. Uh, bicyclists and pedestrians have been taking advantage of that of that curb cut for a number of years. Um, so uh, um, I'm not sure what the what the legal issues are, but my feeling is is that bicyclists are currently using uh, shoulder areas along Green Street without any problem. Uh, it's turned out to be among the, the those bicyclists I've talked to uh, very popular to have that extra space, and it now now provides a way uh, that if you can deal with the two blocks between Wright and Fourth Street, which uh, is terrible for bicyclists. Uh, once you get through there, you've got a straight shot from uh, basically um, Goodwin uh, and maybe even a little bit east of Goodwin all the way across to Neal Street. And uh, it's a nice way to get to Champaign if you need to by bicycle. Thank you. Since there's no significant uh, delays with regard to the studies at engineering, is presently undertaking. Uh, is it necessary to uh, necessarily uh, act on this resolution tonight? Oh, no. I think we one. could postpone it for two weeks if we have two people that would like to do that. Our primary, I thought our primary um, discussion last week was to get engineering started to answer a number of the questions associated with this resolution. So to de delay it a couple of weeks would not hurt anything except give us all more information. Mr. Smith? I, I guess what I'm, I, I guess before, before a motion to defer, I would ask uh, uh, what exactly do we need to pursue on this? Just to understand our, our uh, position in even doing a shoulder? Is that the biggest concern in the, or in the resolution? One of the questions that's been asked of me is, is 
what is our potential vulnerability, if any, uh, for making these improvements? Uh, should there be an increased endangerment of the mixture of bicycle uh, and bus traffic? That's one example. And uh, without really a, a more in-depth <laughs> understanding of the contemplation of these improvements, I don't feel comfortable answering those questions. Another question that was posed to me is, um, is there the, the potential of lawsuits uh, arising out of this? And I said, of course there is. I mean, there's lawsuits that are possible in any set of circumstances, and the question is going to be, does this conform to all engineering standards that are generally accepted? Um, the, the point that I wish to share with you, Alderman Smythe, is that there are a number of questions that have been asked of me very recently. I, I only saw this resolution today. And I don't feel comfortable giving an answer, uh, a, a thoughtful answer to those questions based on the information I have now. And the question I think that the council has to uh, address is, are those important enough to warrant some further study or can we uh, proceed forthwith? One of the things as a matter of courtesy that I did when these questions are presented is to, uh, to discuss them with the public works director uh, and to ask what information we have to share, and if there is a delay at the council, does this set back any of his work to go forward on it? So uh, I've been asked some questions. I've shared with you the answers. These are the concerns we're focusing upon. Uh, there are two bills that are presently pending in the Illinois General Assembly. One of them, as you probably know, uh, has been bandied about for several years in terms of what are the duties uh, in the uh, public uh, right away. And uh, I think that you have to make a decision. Uh, is this an information that you want to have? Uh, do we want to have some further discussion between legal and public works? Are we comfortable with the answers we have right now and want to proceed forward? And I'm comfortable with what this council does, uh, but I've been asked the questions and I wanted to share the answer. Okay. Uh, I guess uh, I would, I would uh, I'd gladly entertain a motion to defer this for two weeks, uh, uh, but if there are other questions before I make that motion, uh, you know. Ms. Barnes. I make a motion to postpone until December 5th. Okay. Is there a second? There's a motion by Ms. Barnes to postpone it until December 5th, seconded by Mr. Lewis. Is there any discussion? Or maybe, yeah, yeah. okay, go ahead. Uh, Dennis Roberts. Yeah, I'm just wondering if even by then we'll actually um, know enough to um, say that we have strong finalized plans. Um, I mean, there are questions that are raised in some of our um, goals that are in the resolution. I think all the goals are good, but you know there are questions about the university's cooperation in creating uh, bus pull-offs. We haven't really had dialogue with them in particular, I don't think, on that topic. And um, we haven't seen, uh, well, we've seen preliminary engineering plans, I guess, and diagrams, but when, since we haven't um, come to any kind of uh, ultimate resolution of what what the configuration of the street's going to be all the way down the street and where the crosswalks are going to be uh, placed. My understanding is this resolution is really to support the staff and the work and to indicate that we're interested in these kinds of um, discussions in the future. I think we're far from coming to a resolution on it. It might happen sometime next year. So I think we should delay it. I don't know if two weeks is going to be enough of time to answer questions that are pertinent to the formalizing a, a real real strong uh, decision. Ms. Stevenson. I guess um, m the only thought I have is why why this was even on the agenda. Why why if if all of the I's weren't dotted and the T's weren't crossed, why couldn't this have just n not even been put on the agenda last Last week for the committee, I, I just think that it shouldn't. It should have been a discussion instead of a resolution. Ms. Chinua, uh, I, I want to have some input, which is that if if uh, our legal counsel comes back and says that there are legal concerns to providing bike access on Lincoln Avenue, I want to then know why is it that I, when I go to Geneva, Batavia, St. Charles. Peoria, Springfield, Philadelphia, Portland, Gainesville, Florida. These are all places that have bike paths on major corridors. What did their legal counsel say to them? And how is it they're able to accomplish something that's so important to our community 
that for some reason we are not able to accomplish here. Ms. Barnes? Um, I'm interested in accomplishment, accomplishing it as well, uh, but I just think that if, uh, if it doesn't affect the plans and we can wait two more weeks just to get some clarification on any potential liability, then so be it. Mr. Gitz, you had a comment? I, I just wanted to respond to Alderman Genoa's uh, comment. Uh, it's not the intent of the legal department to rain in anybody's parade. It's not my intent to suggest that we can't do something that other communities have done. My sole intent is to answer certain questions that have been posed. I don't have an answer for you right now. I intend to get those answers. I intend to share them with you. you know, personally, uh, putting all the legal issues aside, I think that this is a very noble objective. I, I think we all agree on that. The question is, is, is trying to do things in an orderly way so we know that we minimize our legal vulnerability, we maximize the public benefit. So please don't infer from this that I'm somehow trying to throw a stone into uh, the gears of this, because I'm not trying to do that at all. Thank you. Okay, we, have, we have a motion to defer this for two weeks. I would second that motion. Yeah, I think it was already made by Ms. Yeah. Barnes and seconded by Mr. Roberts. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, we'll get more information. Okay, Re reports of um, special committees. I don't think we have any special committees. Reports of officers. Mr. Walden. <coughs> Mayor, I just wanted to update the uh, council briefly on uh, staff work in regard to uh, council goals. Um, the uh, department heads and uh, myself are meeting weekly with the uh, mayor to come up with an action plan for each of the council goals that were passed and uh, we have made a lot of progress we're about halfway through those in terms of completing uh, an action plan for each one of those items we'll be bringing something back to you in the near term but I assure you in the meantime work continues on many of them um, obviously we're focused on uh, crime and public safety and you have some handouts in regard to that tonight's activities focused on economic development a lot of projects that are going forward that you you have heard about we continue to work on Philo Road you might notice today the Kmart's being demolished today and we have a number of, ec of good economic development projects we're working on right now um, we you've seen some of the work that we've done on Route 130 which in the corridor and some of the issues related to that in the, in the, in the past um, you've also seen that um, we've been working on some of the streetscape ideas that were contained in those goals. We have put together a staff group that meets every other week that is focused on the bikeway between Carl and downtown, uh, streetscape on University Avenue, an RFP for some design uh, concepts for the Boneyard and many of those types of uh, downtown infrastructure related aesthetic issues. Uh, we're already working on those. We're already working on the billboard ordinance. We're already working on the rental rehab, it, uh, uh, rental registration uh, program. So all of those things are continuing while we're trying to put organize these in some priority. And staff will continue to uh, work weekly with the mayor. As soon as we finished that process, we'll bring something forward to you. But I assure you, in the meantime, we're not sitting on our hands. We're trying to do. Um, uh, as many of these as quickly as we can. Some of them may take years, however. Thank you. Are there any other reports of officers? Oh, a question for Mr. Smith. Um, Bruce, um, I, I know you're, you're working on this, and the mayor has shared some of the preliminary stuff at our last caucus meeting. We had planned on a caucus meeting to discuss the staff response uh, prior to our December 5th council meeting. Uh, you're basically saying we won't have that material by then, or will we? You know, uh, it's, it's likely that we'll get through it by then. Um, I'm afraid to promise it. <laughs> okay, the, the thing is, I, I guess I was, I was hoping that we'd have, I was hoping we'd have, I was hoping we'd have a formal report on it tonight, mm -hmm. and then we'd be able to talk about it at our December 5th caucus. Um, so you're basically saying you, well, we really can't count on it. Why don't we share with you what we have prior to your December 5th ca caucus, and if we're not complete with a couple items, we'll do those later okay uh, well the thing is I was hoping to have you share those with us at a public meeting or something we won't have a public meeting between now and then so 
uh, it strikes me that we should uh, maybe postpone. Po well, uh, December fifth, which won't have a very won't be a very long meeting. Staff presents whatever they've got, everything that they've got, and then that we have a caucus um, prior to our uh, committee meeting on December twelfth. I hesitate to say December nineteenth because I may be gone. Is that is that okay? I'm going to be gone on December twelfth. Yeah. <laughs> well, that doesn't work. It's hard to get things done in December. I know. Uh, on December 5th after staff presentation. How's that? We'll schedule the caucus for after the council meeting when we're all here. Is that reasonable? Okay. Okay. And uh, yeah, because I'm get you know, it's we're, December will be six months. Uh, my, you know, economic development's a, a very top priority item. There are a number of things going on there, but my neighborhood and is is uh, beginning to ask about neighborhood preservation in particular and where we are on that, and uh, so there's some very impatient people that I, I keep saying, well, let's get the goals out, let's get the goals out, and then see where we go, uh, and I can only do that for so long. I really feel an obligation to get that ball moving. Are there any other reports of officers, Ms. Chinaway? Um, you have before you the public access uh, study committee report. It's um, sitting on your desk, and I just wanted it to, since we aren't discussing it tonight, for it not to get buried in the stack. So my special request to all the council members is if you could take this home, spend a little time with it. Um, it does look thick. It's also uh, uh, has been... Um, it's kind of a well-researched look at the public access television needs in our community. There's quite a bit of good data in here. Um, I've served on the public access study committee for the last six months. Um, I believe we'll be discussing this February, January or February after the commission uh, meets on it. So if you get a chance to look through it, put it aside, make sure it doesn't go in the trash can yet because um, you'll need this at least for the next six months, um, possibly next three years as we look at our uh, franchise, franchise renewal process. Thanks. Uh, I believe this, this, was this posted online with the rest of the materials sent to council? If not, we should, we should just figure out how to make this available to the public as well. I, I, I do know that there is one at the Urbana Free Library, but I don't know if there is one online yet. So we can make that request. Thank you. Under new business, we have ordinance number 2005-11-171, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to execute a general utilities license agreement with the Board of Trustees of the University of Illinois. I'll go ahead and kick this one off. Um, okay. <clears throat> we had this in committee um, twice, actually, during the budget process, and this is related to, this is an item that's related to um, our relationship with the University of Illinois uh, and the switchover from uh, the university uh, purchasing power from Ameren and paying a utility tax on it and providing their own power from Abbott. This created a, a significant problem for us in terms of uh, our, our budget because it was a surprise. And we looked for ways to negotiate um, something of value to the university um, that could call for some payments to the city to ease that or transition that uh, that uh, loss of revenue. And uh, that agreement was negotiated um, and the uh, resulting uh, uh, technical agreement that was uh, was put forward was a, I'll let Bill talk about the details of it uh, more if he chooses, but the combination or combining of 18 previous utility license agreements that we had with the University of Illinois. In a sense, what we did was combine them all into one agreement, update it, and uh, the consideration or compensation uh, for that was uh, 200000 to be paid by December 1 of this year and 200000 to be paid at the end of uh, the next fiscal year. Keep in mind, these are revenues that I assumed that we would receive when we did the budget they're in the budget. Um, I want to act on this tonight, if possible, 
Uh, the first, this is the uh, last meeting we have prior to the 1st of December. And um, Bill and I can answer any questions you have about the technical nature of these license agreements. Uh, in effect, it takes our most current agreement, the best agreement that we have, takes all of the old ones and combines it into that agreement. Um, provides for safeguards to the city in terms of maintenance. Maybe you should, I should let you talk about the safeguards. Um, uh, in terms of uh, replacement of our um, pavement, the, the period of time that the street can be closed, recourse for the city if things aren't going well in terms of those utility uh, and construction projects undertaken by the university. So what we've done is combine all of these. We have the latest, greatest uh, license agreement. All of the old ones are combined into it. Um, there are a few additional crossings on Green Street and Springfield that were included that they're already there. Um, and uh, we highly recommend that the uh, council proceed with this. Mr. Gray, did you want to add anything? Just a couple items. Um, <clears throat> Bruce pretty much um, did hit the highlights. It has been an evolution of refining an agreement from what it looked like 20 years ago to today. But um, this is an efficiency situation, too, in that um, we're not reinventing the wheel for project number 19, 20, 21, et cetera, that will come about. So we'll have a document in place. Um, the specificity is there so that the university and the city can work together on future utility-type projects that may occur. Um, I would just direct your attention to attachment number two, the map, just so it's understood uh, what streets are included. And again, there are in the dashed lines um, those are university-owned streets now, or we may have owned them at one time, but we vacated them. So uh, it's pretty much all the streets within the university district, except for all of Green <clears throat> and except for a portion of Springfield between Matthews and Gregory Street. And um, there are utilities that cross Green Street and Springfield. This allows for the crossing of utilities at those locations. I should add Florida, too, at the south end to occur. But um, there would have to be a, a special consideration uh, in the unlikely event that there would be a utility within those right-of-ways paralleling um, those streets. So um, I, think, I think that's pretty much, pretty much it. Um, Bruce Walden. Uh, just one more matter. I did uh, receive from the University Council office this afternoon, late this afternoon, the uh, roll call approval that was uh, made uh, vote by the uh, Board of Trustees that was held on uh, the Board of Trustee meeting on November 10th, 2005. So they have approved the, dot, the what we have before us. Thank you for all your work on this. Mm -hmm. um, Ms. Barnes, did you have your hand up? Did you want to? Okay, Mr. Roberts. Um, it's a pretty uh, progressive idea to consolidate um, 18 or 19 old um, agreements into one. Uh, reading through the document, it sounds like it, that the, the university uh, gets the opportunity to change and upgrade uh, utilities yeah. in the right of way, which is still retained by, uh, the, by the city, but um, it'll not be charge fees or other kinds of uh, remunerances to the city. So. We're kind of doing this for basically a two little lump sum uh, pocket money. And I'm just wondering if um, about the duration of the agreement, um, you know, the university's been there already for over 100 years or 100 years, I don't know, anyway, a long time. The city's been here for a long time. Um, maybe over uh, 10 years, the remuneration to the city would be um, considered healthy. but. In the future, uh, these streets aren't going to disappear, and the university and the, and the city are going to be um, maintaining their business coincidentally together. So I'm just wondering um, if we stop uh, uh, receiving fees for the use of uh, or the right of way of these streets over the long period, aren't we actually losing money? Can I address that? Yeah. Um, of course, the, this combines the 18 agreements that we previously had, which the remuneration was zero. I mean, we already, these were agreements that go back a ways that the council had already approved, and, mm -hmm. and 
you know, you got a big goose egg for those in the past, and all we've done is package them up and resell them, in effect. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but there was there, it does raise the question over a period. Think, I think, Dennis, that you raise a, a great question, and that is, over the long haul, um, should we consider some different arrangement with the university for the use of these right-of-ways? Um, should they be sold in the areas west of Lincoln Avenue, for example, where we have a public right-of-way that's 100 percent surrounded by state of Illinois property? And uh, I think that's a, a great question and one that we've actually begun to talk about a little bit. You know, what, what, what does the future, I mean, what should it look like in the future uh, in terms of our responsibilities for these rights away and the university's responsibility? Because in, in a sense, the, the local street portion, not Springfield, Florida, or Green, where there's a collector and a public, um, more of a public need for access and, and pass through, these local streets that only serve the, the university. I mean, who, who properly should uh, be maintaining and owning those those streets? And that's a question that's we don't have time to deal with uh, immediately, but one we'd like to look at in the long term. It, it seems that all the interactions we have with the university, first, the, 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 it's like uh, the icing is about the mm -hmm. philosophy of uh, interaction and the appropriateness of uh, safety and. and you know, interaction with that, but the bottom line is always um, remuneration fees. And right. uh, um, this this uh, agreement, you know, doesn't have like a sunset clause or something. We we haven't agreed only to do it for 25 years. Mm -hmm. There might be 25 years from now, there might be a lot of different kinds of um, new technology, and they might be mm -hmm. digging up the streets continually, and the city would be missing out on you know. A numerous different fees that might be collectible in some time in the future, and I just don't. Uh, you know, you always want to be financially, you know, res responsible for the the future generations of the city of Urbana, and I just for for it might appear like a very small amount that we've decided to uh, stop collecting fees from the university, a unless there's. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's. A, I'm just saying it's a question that comes to my mind. <coughs> Can I further collaborate? Mr. Walden. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Um, well, our solution on the streets west of Harvey uh, in the last five years has been to sell them to the university. Yeah. And um, um, that, that I, I think Danielle probably remembers that sale that uh, we negotiated and uh, we sold uh, various pieces of our right-of-way um, for $2.9 million. Um, it's been about four years ago now. So that was how we handled some of those. Seven hundred dollars a brick, <laughs> and, and keep in mind that you know that's an asset of the city. However, it is also a maintenance liability of the city, mm -hmm. and you know the cost to improve and maintain these streets is quite considerable. So, you know, I, I think probably what we need to do over the long term is look at what streets should be city streets and what streets should be university streets, and deal with the revenue side, the asset sale side of it. Do you think that the university will be um, interested in talking to us again once this um, commitment has been made? They'll say, well, we have an agreement. Why would we come back to the table? Well, we already have an agreement with them for those 18. Well, yeah. But Except the only difference is, is now you're going to get paid for it. Is there a motion to? OK. Uh, Bill, just real quickly, um, there's a tiny little section of Lincoln Avenue that they talk about here on page three uh, between Pennsylvania and Vermont. Is there something under the street there that that belongs to the university or something? You know why that why that little stretch of Lincoln? Yes, I can't tell you what it is, but that's what that's there for. But they've got something there already. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then I noticed that it, the map shows a, a, a little piece of champagne in here, or, or is that, or does Urbana actually jut a little bit past uh, Wright Street? I mean, how, how does this agreement, uh, this map? The, the this dashed line is the master plan boundary. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, and so. then to be clear, Wright Street is Champagne responsibility, um, okay. south of. Springfield Avenue. Between Springfield and the University, it's a state route. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. Mr. Roberts. Um, will the, uh, hand, with, will the selling of um, the right of way of uh, maintaining, maintaining uh, utilities and other conveyances to the university that's indicated in this uh, proposal that have to do with the termination of uh, Illinois Street, Oregon Street, and Nevada Street at the Lincoln Avenue um, side on the east side of the campus in any way influence the city's ability to uh, conduct and change Lincoln Avenue and the, in, in the planning? No. Because that would be a consideration since we're planning on changing Lincoln Avenue. Okay, is there a, a motion to approve this ordinance? Second. Moved by Mr. Lewis, seconded by Ms. Chinoweth. Um, this is or ordinance number 2005-11-171, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to execute a general utilities license agreement with the Board of Trustees of the University of Illinois. Would the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Barnes? Yes. Mr. Bowersox? Yes. Ms. Shenoweth? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Roberts? No. Mr. Smythe? Yes. Ms. Stevenson? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Next, ordinance number 2005-11-172, an ordinance amending the zoning map of the city of Urbana, Illinois. The rezoning of 2007 North Lincoln Avenue from industrial to B3 general business. This is plan case number 1964-M-05. Good evening. Stated, this is a case for 2007 North Lincoln Avenue. Um, Speedway owns that entire five acre tract at the corner of Killarney and Lincoln. Uh, currently, the only use they have there is their gas station and that is the portion of this track that is uh, currently zoned industrial. Uh, just a brief overview of what Speedway is planning. They're going to relocate their gas station to the southwest corner of Killarney and Lincoln, rebuild it much in the uh, style of the Marathon Station that uh, was just constructed at Bradley and Lincoln Avenue since it's the uh, same company. And then they uh, intend to market the remainder of the site, which would be roughly three acres as uh, commercial uh, regional business. Uh, there are just a couple points I want to stress in this case. Uh, as I've mentioned, the petitioner owns the entire five acres there. Um, the majority of their property is already zoned B3 general business. It's only the gas station that's zoned industrial. Uh, the proposed uh, zoning change is consistent with the 2005 Urbana Comprehensive Plan. Um, they uh, plan and envision this area as a regional business hub and uh, this site in particular is singled out for development since it is the uh, only site remaining on Lincoln Avenue that has a direct frontage and is uh, optimal for commercial uses. Um, the historic zoning in this area for the county has been industrial uh, and you'll find a lot of the properties that are still in the county in this area are also in zoned industrial uh, today. Um, the majority of businesses near the Lincoln Avenue I-74 interchange have already been rezoned to B3 general business. And this is really to take advantage of the uh, proximity to the highway interchange, uh, and this includes Ramada and the Holiday Inn and similar businesses. Uh, the location with the proximity to the interchange makes the subject property desirable for commercial land use to serve travelers and uh, patrons of the hotels in the area, as well as the uh, Increasing the uh, number of student apartment complexes in the area can help serve daily needs. Uh, there, uh, the LaSalle criteria for rezoning, uh, which the city generally looks at when in rezoning cases, uh, we've reviewed those uh, criteria and this proposed rezoning appears to be generally consistent uh, with those criteria. And at their uh, meeting, the plan commission voted six ayes to zero nays to recommend approval of the rezoning to city council. Uh, there was some commentary from the Ramada Inn. Uh, most of their comments, which are outlined in the memos, are related to site planning, uh, such as uh, tree relocation and uh, the relocation of the uh, Speedway Highway sign. It's actually located on the Ramada Inn property. So 
Uh, in plan case 1964 MO5, the city council may either approve or deny the request. And based on the evidence presented in the discussion above, plan commission and staff recommend the city council approve plan case 1964 MO5. Are there any questions? Mr. Wimpy? Thank you. Is there a motion to approve ordinance number 2005-11-172? So moved. Okay. Second. Um, <laughs> 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 uh, I would say, um, all right, Lynn Barnes um, made the motion and it was seconded by Mr. Roberts. Any other discussion? Yeah. Uh, with I the, do. Oh, Mr. Roberts. I, I, I agree with the zoning change. I think it makes sense. Um, I also have uh, thoughts about um, the two stipulations. Well, the stipulation that uh, um, the hotel had that about you know how the how the site plan might look, but that's really not under discussion tonight. So I'm just saying that yeah, we're interested in how that's going to look. Would the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Barnes. Yes. Mr. Bowersox. Yes. Ms. Shenoweth? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. Mr. Smythe? Yes. Ms. Stevenson? Yes. Uh, motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next is appointments to the Neighborhood Safety Task Force, which goes back to a motion by Ms. Barnes in September. And I've put together a list of people from all the neighborhood associations that I know about, at least. Um, Jerry Moreland from UCAN, Samuel Johnson from UCAP, Clint Poppets from HUNA, Richard Rebman from the East Urbana Neighborhood Watch, Teresa Michelson from SUNA, Diane Marlin from SUNA, Liz Cardman and Lisa Truel from WUNA, Dave Barr from Barr Real Estate, Barry Weiner from Weiner Companies, Esther Pat from the Tenant Union, John Roscoe from Land of Lincoln Legal Service, Mike Beely, our assistant police chief, and Al Johnson, an Urbana police officer who um, is an expert on neighborhood watch. So I think this is a, a real good mix of people from the neighborhoods and from the land, representing landlords and tenants and uh, the police force. And their task is to study and recommend new ordinances to promote neighborhood safety through crime reduction and basic building safety. So I appreciate um, a motion to appoint these people. Or are there any questions? Second. Okay, the motion by Mr. Smythe and seconded by Mr. Bowersox. Are there any questions? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Yeah. Okay, the motion carries. Thank you. And we have here a discussion of signs. Route 130 corridor. I mean, the only thing I would have to say is that we're going to have the study session, and um, I've asked Libby Tyler to contact um, Walmart about getting a monument-style sign there instead of a big-style sign, old-fashioned sign, because I think we want Route 30 to look good. So we'll we'll have this discussion probably in uh, February when we get things put together. Any questions? Yeah, is the scope of it broad enough that we're inviting people to come and talk about billboards or just normal signs or both billboards and, you know, other business signs? I think we'll be talking about both. Okay, thanks. Mr. Smith. <coughs> um, a question. I know that we, we talked about other developments that will be coming based on the recent land sale in there and, and how we've got leverage based on site planning and so on. What leverage do we have with Walmart at this point with respect to the site plan that they submitted? Uh, that's not the sign I was hoping for. Um, Did you go like that? <laughs> uh, that suggests to me that, that we need to pass something now before they put a sign in the ground. It's too late. The sign's already put up? Is that what you're saying? No, they've already got it. Oh, I here. did speak with their architect, um, and need to get he needs to get back with me on the status of their sign. Um, he did say Walmart tries to be accommodating. I followed up with an official letter to Walmart headquarters requesting a monument style sign. Uh, we did just receive. And I'm not saying everybody's coordinated here on the Walmart side, but we did receive a um, permit package that doesn't 
yet meet our requirements. So we'll continue to work with Walmart in a um, encouraging fashion to see if we can't encourage a monument sign. It might be as we move along, if they desire a larger sign, they may request a variance that may come forward, but we haven't even gotten that far to discuss it. But we're not currently issuing a permit for a sign. We don't yet have an application that meets our ordinance. We'll keep trying, and they did say they they do like to consider these requests. Um, it could be a little late for this one, but we'll see. Mr. Roberts. And beyond that, um, I mean, it, the importance of really just making this discussion uh, come about is so is so vital to us because even the uh, possible development of the Marathon Speedway gas station on the corner of Lincoln and um, well, whatever that road is up there, Clarney, um, you know, it's the gateway supposedly into the university. Um, you know, people are coming off the highway into our town. Every single sign that goes up now at a new development um, that where we don't have a sign ordinance uh, or a revised sign discussion um, finalized, you know, is up for grabs. And uh, we're now we're starting to, to move into an area where we're having a lot of new development come up. And so I'm anxious and I'll be excited to hear um, when the discussion starts and how fast we can maybe come up with solutions. Okay. Um, there being no further business, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.